Tips Radio Podcast with your host, Bobby Coleman. On this episode of the Russell Force Radio Podcast, my guest will be joining me and we will be discussing his return to the AWWL ring for the second time to the Williamson Jubilee in 2016. What will he have in store for his opponents? Tune in right now and find out on the AWWL WrestleForce Radio Podcast, brought to you by Big Time AWWL Wrestling. Welcome in everyone to the very first ever podcast for Big Time AWWL Wrestling. I am your host of the Russell Force Radio Video Podcast, Bobby Coleman. And sitting over here to my right is my guest for this evening's podcast, Mr. Rainbow McFeeders. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. How are you, yourself? Great. That's good. So, Rainbow, uh, I understand that you've been in the business for a mighty long time? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't say that out loud. I think the viewers might actually think that I'm old or something, but <laughs> uh, 11 years going on 12 pretty soon. So if I remember correctly, while doing my research, you uh, started training as a teenager. Yeah, I was actually almost 14, actually right about my age. Don't do that, people. Trust me, don't do that. <laughs> I was 13, almost 14, started in November 28th, was my first day okay. of training, and I was trained by Dan the B. Severn. I was a little kid in Colorado, Michigan, who didn't really know what I wanted to do at first. Okay. And then when I was 13, almost 14, I was like, I was watching a match between Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and Ric Flair. Of course. Of course. And so I'm like, that's what I want to do. And then I looked up a little bit more and I saw Gorgeous George and yeah, it's definitely what I wanted to do. Yeah. And you recently found out more information about your dad, yeah. who, as it turns out, is a professional wrestler of his own. Yeah, he was a professional wrestler back in the 80s. Uh, I wouldn't say early 80s, I would say like mid-range to mid-80s. Okay. And then he stopped two months before the 90s began, which was like 88, 89. Wow. But he was, he was in the business for a short time, but that short stint, he did a lot. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> Because there were a lot of there were a lot of companies running around in the eighties with all of the uh, territories going on. Oh, definitely. He was uh, he had a short stint in AWA. He had a short stint in WCW when WCW was NWA, and he stopped mainly because like his he was a Family Guy. Okay. Yeah. Pun unintended. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. But he, he was he was a family type of guy. He he wanted to focus more on developing a family. And that's why he stopped wrestling. Okay, so I also understand you wanted to explain to the viewers how you got your start in the wrestling business. <laughs> it's actually a funny story, and I'm glad I get to tell you, and the viewers. Um, I was doing amateur wrestling. It was the it was one of those like, hey, I might as well just try the amateur wrestling. And I did a brain buster by accident oh during my. amateur wrestling, and the kid landed perfectly, which is a good thing. Of course, but Shout of course, but <laughs> brain busters are a no-no in amateurs, yeah, yeah. obviously. And Dan Severn was the wrestling coach, because the current wrestling coach was injured with okay. his neck, so he couldn't train, obviously, so Dan Severn took over for about six months, and he's like, you did a brain buster pretty well. I'm like, thank you. And he's like, well, because you did that, you obviously you can learn more about amateur wrestling. I'm like, yeah, yeah. that's the truth. But he also said, you know, there is one place that you can go to. Talk to your dad about Michigan sports games. And then told my dad that I wanted to, I didn't want to do that type of wrestling. I wanted to do professional wrestling. And next thing you know, my first day of training was probably the hardest day of my life. I would imagine so, <laughs> as it is for many across the country uh, who've tried their hand at wrestling. Well, the first day, there's this annual thing that Dan the Beast 7 has, which is called Chop Fest. Okay. If you know, it, it, 
That's why I'm pretty cool. My chaps. But, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> my, like, the way that your re- the red is showing on your coat mm-hmm. right there was nothing compared to what my chest was at the end of the night. Wow. I probably had... No, I didn't have stitches. I almost had stitches the first night. The second night I did. But it's because of Cyrus was there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Big guy. Big hand. Little chest. Not a good thing. Not but, a great combination. But it was my first official chop fest. And when I did my first ever chop, you hurt. I the there was a there's a boxing area for Michigan mm-hmm. sports camps, and their music was blaring off. Because obviously they're getting ready, they're in the zone. They heard my chop from there. Wow! <laughs> and they're like, "Yeah, you're pretty good on that." So what I did with uh with preparing for the chop fests and preparing for chops and everything else like that was mm-hmm. I chopped the cement wall like fifty or fifty to one hundred times every practice. Wow! Until I learned it. That's one way to. Get your chops in, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, but let me tell you, the receipt's pretty good too. <laughs> yeah, of course. Because <laughs> when you chop a wall, it won't it won't bend. Yeah, you know that whole little thing about dodge, uh, the movie Dodgeball. You yeah. Can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Don't dodge a wrench. <laughs> just hit it. Just hit it head on. You'll be okay after the first couple concussions. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So. uh you told us now about breaking into the business. Mm-hmm. How about breaking into the world of AWWL? It was a it was a long journey. I'm going to say that very, 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 very hardly. <laughs> At first, I didn't even know that I was going to be able to be a part of AWWL. Okay. Because emotionally, I thought I had it. Mm-hmm. But at the time, I didn't. I, st- I was still emotionally struck about my dad passing away. And it took me two years. Wow. I, I, it's the weirdest... It's the weirdest thing to deal with, because your father is, like, the one that you talk to every day. Yeah, absolutely. My My father was my rock. My father was my everything in the business. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and, Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, I want him to be a part of the business in a way. So he basically molded my career a little bit. Okay. And when he was gone, oh, excuse me, I didn't know what my career was going to have, what was what my career was going forward into. So... I took a couple of years off to clear my mind, mm-hmm. and then I got a phone call from your broadcast partner, Chris Wrench, and he told me that there's a show in Williamston, mm-hmm. and I'm like, Williamston, okay. He's like, here's this information, get a hold of Eddie Farhat. So I got a hold of Eddie Farhat, and I told him about who I was. And it, at first he was very like, yeah, I don't know you yet. And it was, he's like, you, you can easily do a tryout, which tryouts are amazing. But <laughs> I was supposed to be going against somebody else. In okay. Houston. But Dan Seven wanted me to go against one of his guys. It was very controversial. But at the same time, I showed Eddie more... Then I, I showed Eddie that I had character. Of course. And that is something in the business that you really need to have. <laughs> Definitely. Character sells the entire product. And and the best part about the character is Eddie said just be yourself. I think you were I think you were there with that one. I was. Yeah, Eddie was like, Just be yourself. That I'm was like, Well shoot, I can do that. <laughs> that was my first Jubilee as well. Yeah. See, and it's it, it's one of those things where this next Jubilee will be my one year with AWWL and with all the whole trials and tribulations of certain matches that I had, like the ladder match in Brooklyn, which was mm-hmm. an amazing match. Which you can easily find on YouTube. Definitely. There was also 
a match not that long ago. I was going against Nina Dufree, which was also on YouTube. Yep. And the last match they had before Williamston, was, uh, the, this next Williamston, was against Crazy Nick Pope. And, and that was a great that was a great match. Thank you. Um, it was one of those things to where I wanted to show the professional wrestling world that I'm still standing. I'm still here, regardless of what people think of me. Absolutely. And I was always the one that was always, eh, I don't want him to talk. Mm -hmm. I want him to be beat. Or I don't want him to know, I don't want people to know about his personal life. And I don't want his personal life to actually go into the business because it'd be too personal. Absolutely. I mean, speaking of personal life, mm-hmm. you know, um, being openly gay as you are. Oh, definitely. What is it like traveling from locker room to locker room not knowing what could happen on any given night? Well, I think the best part about professional wrestling is you are always going to have that. You are always going to have the people who like you. You are always going to have the people who hate you. And the, As it is, it says card is subject to change. Mm -hmm. So that means I could verse Crazy Nick Pope again. Yep. I could go against Lunatic, (laughs) which that would be kind of cool. I'm like, what? Yeah, of course. I can go against probably Tim Horner Jr., the champion. Of course. You you may never know what's going to happen. That's why you have to stay tuned and you got to figure that out. When I, I. I honest at times I honestly don't even look at the card. <laughs> okay. At times, until it's like the last minute. Yeah. Because that's when you know it's like okay, this is happening. It's like when you get ready to head to the venue, check out the card, see who you're taking on that evening, mm-hmm. and who knows that person might not show up. Exactly. Things might get a little wild. Exactly. And that's the best part about the business. Some people like it wild. Obviously, I do. Of course, absolutely. <laughs> so. uh... I've heard you've been having uh, some Twitter conversations. Would you like to indulge the fans in your conversation? Um, actually, there's a couple of conversations that I had. One was actually from uh, NXT's Mojo Raleigh. And I... It was a retweet, mainly. Most most of it sometimes we retweets, some of it's... Hey, it's still... It's still a message. It's still part conversation, you know. I had Mojo Raleigh saying, stay hyped, do the best you can, which is great because in the independent circuit, it gets very dangerous. Yes, <laughs> indeed it does. It gets very dangerous. Um, let's see. Jerry King Waller, he retweeted uh, one of my posts and said, good luck, which is awesome. And thank you, Jerry. Um, <laughs> let's see. There's the Nature Boy Ric Flair couple times. And One of the greatest of all time. Definitely. And getting a message from Flair is like getting a message from the wrestling gods because you just, you don't know what's gonna, what he's going to say. Because it's mm-hmm. either, eh, it's a good thing or bad thing. But he said, good luck and have fun. Which is always the best thing to do. It's like, if you can hear the words good luck and have fun and keep up the good work, mm-hmm. that's the best part. Um, Mauro Ranallo. Yeah. He retweeted something. And he was SmackDown commentator, yeah. Yep. And I, I put on my Twitter account, and I, I hopefully you don't get mad about this. And I was like, one of these days, I want him to commentate one of my matches. Yeah. Because it would just sound so amazingly elegant. That would be fun. <laughs> be nice. You know, having Mauro as yeah. part of a three man team, maybe? Yeah, it would be amazing. It would be amazing. And not to mention, a uh, former commentator and WWE Hall of Famer, Jim Ross. Yes. He retweeted, and uh, the same exact thing, he said, yeah, he's pretty good, and keep up the good work. Hearing that from a legend like him, it just made me as giddy as a schoolgirl, but <laughs> it was great. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but uh, other than that, like, I've been getting, it's been off and on retweets from certain W superstars and legends and Hall of Famers, too. So it's, you may never know what you can post on social media. Because there, there's some times where I post some very negative stuff. I mean, we all do. But 
Yeah. It's, well, some people do. It's but the devil in us all, I mean. It, of course. But that devil can actually be an angel at times, too. Let yes, it you. can be. <laughs> so, I understand. You told me off the air a few weeks ago mm -hmm. that, uh, well, actually, I think it might have been a few months ago now, mm -hmm. but uh, you had some words with uh, Darren Young from WWE. Yes. As well. Darren Young said, uh, congratulations on being out and being proud of who you are. And he also said that it means a lot because I posted on my Twitter, of course. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of things on Twitter, guys. So, yeah, follow me. <laughs> follow me at Dino, D-Y-N-O, Drive, D-R-I-V-E, 20, uh, 2016. And I will have the uh, Twitter handles for both of us at the bottom of the video. Cool. So, there's a... Uh, he I basically said that if it wasn't for him being out and proud of who he was, I don't think I would have done it. I would have been very closeted myself. But at the same time, I look back at my career, and I was already out. Mm -hmm. I was already outed by the fans, which, thank you. If it wasn't for you fans outing me, I wouldn't be here today, so thank you. So I heard off the air that this coming Williamson show that we will be talking about in segment number two... Right there, segment number two. You will have some very special guests from the area. Yes. There, last year, it was my first, of course, my first Williamson's job, my first show in AWWL. And there was this woman with a rainbow mohawk that as soon as she heard the openly gay professional wrestler, and at the time it was Dynamite McFeeders, <laughs> I, like, she screamed, gay, yes. Well, she messaged me a couple of days ago. Okay. And she said, hey, are you going to be in the show in Williamston? And I said, look at the card very closely. She saw the last name. And she's like, yes, okay, definitely. I will definitely be there. And she's going to be bringing more than 15, maybe 20 people with her. So Great. that's really, really cool. So please get your tickets. It's really, really awesome. It would be really, really awesome. Yeah, really, really awesome indeed. We will be talking about that, like I said, in segment number two. So, when segment number two comes up, pay very close attention because you will want to hear the ticket prices. It is a not-miss show. You cannot miss not it. Not-miss. Don't miss it, please, for the love of God. Because they, <laughs> there's some real good matches on that card, and I'm not, and I'm not speaking about my match alone. It's going to be... An amazing card. And plus also you get to meet and greet. So you get to see me before the match. You get to see a bunch of the, uh, the other wrestlers on the card before the match as well. Great photo opportunities, you know. And meet and greet with the world champion. The television champion. One half the, of the tag team champions. And the battle royal winner. As well as maybe even potentially the uh, Lucha Libre champion will be available. Yeah. Which is really, really awesome. <laughs> so, Mr. McFeeders, uh, yes. anything else you would like to indulge for the fans? Well, let's see. Um, there is a lot of more questions. I probably didn't know about. Like, I can do some interesting facts about myself. Okay. Which is nice. Um, like I said, broke into the business at 13, almost 14. Um, I... <laughs> Got thrown over the top rope in a battle royal against a woman that was very petite. Oh, Her my. Her Civil Star. Hi, Civil. <laughs> she, I was, uh, 15. Shout out to Civil. Yep. <laughs> I was 15 years old, and it was my first ever battle royal. I was very, very green, and green means, yeah, very green. So. Fresh out of the box, basically. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I didn't get eliminated by her once, I got eliminated by her twice. Ugh. And the second time, it was a glory gauntlet. Oh my. I have been in... My, my win-loss record at Price of Glory Wrestling. Shout out to Dan Severn. Um, in Price of Glory Wrestling. I have a 4-24 record. Oh my. Yeah. They basically put me in against the big guys, and it was, and that's actually a good thing, because if 
I go against big guys such as the lunatic, such as the bigger guys. Doesn't matter who. Even the giant pharaoh one day. I may mean, never know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, giant pharaoh may once again show up in the AWWL. Yeah. And you may never know. Even Congo Kong himself. Even Osiris. Yeah. They just might show up as well. I went against. The, I actually did go against Osiris in a dark match, and that was the quickest. Ugh. One of the quickest matches I think I've ever had in my life. <laughs> it was two minutes long. <laughs> oh my. Yeah. But I was I was 16 at the time. Was very young, and he looked at me like I was wide eyes. <laughs> of course. Yeah. But let's see. Um. I was very, like, when you find out that you're either a good guy or a bad guy, I don't consider myself either. Okay. Because when I step into those rings, when I step into the ring, it all depends on the crowd. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I mean depending on what city and if there's a heavy LGBT community presence there, possibly at the venue. Definitely. That's definitely it, because I actually went to my first ever Pride three years ago. Okay. While I was actually out of action, taking a hiatus. And it was one of the best experiences of my life, because some people actually do watch YouTube a lot, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. And there was this one kid, I can remember it clear as day, I was just walk- walking around with my sister, Amanda, shout out to Amanda, um, she... <laughs> said that uh she's like this guy's staring at you and he's not staring at me he's going like mm-hmm like and I'm nose like, to nose basically I'm like, hello but like, i didn't know what to say i was gone for a while and then he's yeah. like hey you're da, da, da. And i'm like from price of glory i'm like yeah i was da, da, da. <laughs> thank <laughs> you and he's like where have you been a lot of people's been asking about you blah, 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 blah. asking me 21 questions trust and believe I love answering questions. Ask him. <laughs> Absolutely, he does. But at the same time, when you jump to to the wrestlers and the superstars, they kind of get a little fid, fidgety a little bit. Like, whoa, whoa, okay, cool, thank you, sweet. Especially when you're in the independent circuit, because there's not that many people that actually say, hey, we like you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's not really much of a national audience or television presence but that's the great thing about awwl the uh big time wrestling name has been around since the The 1960s 1960s actually and uh started by the original sheik ed farhat and uh shout out to a great legend wwe hall of famer and his boys tom and eddie have taken over the business and they recreated Big Time Wrestling, by presenting it as AWWL Big Time Wrestling, but now we are known as Big Time AWWL Wrestling. Mm -hmm. And the legacy of the original Sheik lives on to this day. Definitely. I mean, if you really think about it, a little bit of all of us has a little bit of Sheik in them. Just a little bit. Especially hardcore, because the latter match... So a little bit of hardcore with me, but at the same time, you can't get as big of a hardcore specialist as the Sheik. Of course, I mean, you, you can get close, like his, close. like his nephew, the Lunatic. But yeah, you can get as close as Lunatic, but uh, nothing beats. You can't beat the classics. You really can't. No. Not One at of all. my favorite matches was. One of my favorite hardcore matches was actually Abdullah the Butcher. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Abdullah. You are freaking phenomenal. He, I, I always mark out with this match. It's him against Bruiser Brody. Yes. That was one of the biggest matches I think I've ever... Like, biggest bloodthirsty matches I think I've ever seen. And... I think uh, what really drawn me into the AWL business, this is how it is. I I was actually very intrigued with some of the matches mm-hmm. 
that you guys come up with. Yeah, right. I mean, like, there's a Porta John match. One of the best Porta John matches was last year. I agree. I was like, uh, 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 okay, cool, thank you. And you, there's a Porta John match. There's a flaming thumbtack table match. Like, you can think of so many things, especially this year's William Cinema. Mm -hmm. There's a big, huge event. There's a big, huge spe special attraction, which we'll talk about in the second half, mm -hmm. which is coming up pretty soon, by the way. And, like, there's so many hardcore matches, but if you, but when you take the hardcore out, you're still seeing a bunch of other work, uh, a bunch of other wrestlers Mm -hmm. Showing that they have ruthless aggression as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the last show that I was in, I, I overheard uh, Chris French saying, wow. <laughs> All he said about the match was, wow. And it was a good wow. Uh, after the match, I went over to him. I'm going to be breaking that one. Saying, what do you think? Because... I've known Chris French ever since I was knee high to a grass hat. So, so basically breaking kayfabe a little bit. A little bit breaking kayfabe a little. Bit. But he, he looked at me. He's like, "That was one of the best matches I think I've ever seen you in," and it was against Crazy Nick Pope. And, and I would have had to agree, because I've been in some crazy matches. I have been on the floor busting my butt. Just for a cup of coffee, actually. There was one that actually had a cup of coffee. That was my actual, like, pay. That was actually my pay. But, like, I had that match, and I basically looked at Chris, and I went like this. Okay. And usually I can show signs of of my old wrestling character, Dynamite McPeters. Yeah. Usually, if I shake like this, or if I tremble like this, and if I sway from side to side, and I get that angry look, that's when it's on. That's when it's like, okay, this guy means business now. Absolutely. Yeah. But. So with the last few minutes of the first half of the show, um, are there any dream opponents you'd like to face possibly in the future? For AWWL? Oh. AWWL or any other company for that Okay. Matter. Shout out to this. I don't care what or who. I would love to be in a Porta Gen match. Okay. Honestly, I was looking at it the first night and I said, that's what I want to do. That's the match I want to have. A Porta Gen match. And honestly, the person that I'm bursting okay. would be a perfect first Porta Gen match with. Because if you think of it too, this way. Two high flyers. I'm a high flyer myself. I don't show it though. <laughs> As is Soul Man Nelson. Yes. Soul Man Nelson is also a high flyer. He's been in the business for a while. Long while. <laughs> He's actually kind of getting old. No, I'm just joking. Just joking. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> just a little bit. Just but. a little bit. But he, he embodies the cruiserweight division. In AWWL, and I wish we had a cruiserweight championship because if it was if it brought to myself versus Soul Man Nelson, a cruiserweight championship, three stages of hell, okay, and the last and the last match will be the Portage on match. That would actually be a great match. Start off with a submission match, my specialty. Then start off with probably a first blood. Okay. Or so, a last man standing match, and that a Porta John match. So going know. into match number three, basically, mm -hmm. you could both be wearing masks. Or maybe <laughs> a cage match in the second one. Yeah, that would I mean, be fun. It, it would be so crazy. But the thing is, I usually never wear a mask. Okay. I don't think I would ever wear a mask, because I don't want to show... Like, Don't get me wrong, Lucha Libre Wrestling is one of the best wrestling... Like the one of the best wrestling wrestling events I would ever see. Absolutely. But at the same time, I don't I don't consider myself a lucha libre competitor. I yeah. consider myself a cruiserweight. I mean, don't get me wrong, lucha libre is a great competition setting 
you know, mm -hmm. for all the guys coming from Mexico or wherever they come from. But cruiserweights, there's nothing like a cruiserweight in the AWWL. Definitely, if if the Farhat family actually brings back uh, brings back the cruiserweight division, which I know they had one back in the day, they're gonna see a whole different side of me that I think that they would love to see, like even you would love to see forever. It would be one of the best matches of all time, honestly. Absolutely. So one final question, Mr. McPeters. Absolutely. With the potential for um, the match that we are going to be discussing in a little while, the Steel Cage Fans Bring the Weapons match, uh, what are your thoughts on the twist to the match with fans bringing the weapons? I guess they have to stay tuned for that one because even I'm out of I, even I'm out of breath about it. Because <laughs> hopefully, I, I I really want to be picked. I honestly do. I really honestly want to be picked. It, it would sound weird, but I, I want to. But we'll talk about that in the second segment. And with that, we will be right back after this commercial break, brought to you by Big Time AWWL Wrestling. We'll see you back right after this break. June 24th, Friday night at 8.15 in downtown Williamston at the Red Cedar Jubilee. We will have more of the great action from big time AWWL wrestling. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oh yeah, definitely. So let's start with our main event for that night. It will be for the AWWL World Heavyweight Championship. Newly crowned champion Tim Horner Jr. will have his second title defense. This time, it will be against the new number one contender and the challenger, the AWWL television champion, hmm. Salvatore Morocco. What are your thoughts on these two gentlemen? Well, uh, I have mad respect for Tim Hunter Jr. He, uh, ever since his return, he basically said, look, Rastakhan, you had that title for way too long. Mm -hmm. everybody was agreeing towards it. But Rastakhan wasn't going to hold back. Yeah, we, already know, we already know this. Rastakhan is a, is a monster of a man. Yeah. And when Tim Horner pinned, when Tim Horner got the win, got the pinfall victory over Rastakhan, the first thing that came into my mind was, wow, that crowd reaction was amazing. Yes, and the theatrics to his entrance, which you can also find on YouTube, by the way. The theatrics to his entrance were completely awesome. Yes, his the he's a very theatric like he he has theater background. Let me tell you, because <laughs> trust me, I know a little bit about theater. But when his his entrance is like a WrestleMania style entrance for AWWL. 
and you don't normally see that on the independent scene. Not even close. Like, even, trust me, I I come up with some theatrics myself, I'm not gonna lie, but Tim Horner Jr. has a certain type of aesthetic towards it. Absolutely we all does. have a different aesthetic, of course. But Tim Horner Jr., I can actually say, is a real, real good champion for AWL right now. And, ah, uh, Morocco. <laughs> what can you say about Salvatore Morocco? Alrighty. Other than the fact he's the current, current television champion. Mm. When we were talking about uh, earlier in the segment who I wanted to go against, mm -hmm. if I had a television championship match against Salvador Morocco, I would not hesitate. I'm sure you wouldn't. Oh, no. Morocco, as a human being, I'm not going to call myself as a man because, A, that's a big, huge bam in my face, but... Don't get me wrong. You are one hell of a champion. Regardless. Your mean streak. <laughs> Let me be honest there. But I'm not going to take anything for granted at all with Morocco. He has that. He has that look. Okay, yeah. He, he has that, I'm going to say semi-flamboyant. Yeah. Yeah, semi-flamboyant, but very technical. And I called him, during the course of the broadcast, actually at the last show, I called him a crass individual. He is very, very crass. And also, at times, take off the C and the R. But yeah, <laughs> at the same, of course. But... What can you say about Salvatore Morocco except for he is a damn good, and hopefully I can hopefully I can say damn because I hey, said it again. It's my podcast. Okay, so he he's a damn good champion. He had that television championship for how long? He's had it for actually quite some time uh, since 2015. Yeah, he's had it ever since like what was my second show. Yeah. yeah, it was my second show. So yeah, 11, Since 11, 11 last, or 10 months ago. Last July, actually, I believe. Yeah, it was last July. Yeah, it's been 11 months. Wow. Almost one full year of being a television champion. And even though, by hook or crook, he still got the job done. But uh, one thing that I know for sure, he's missing that one important element that got him that television championship. This is true. The very lucky Lucy. Yes. And, um, okay, you might think this is a little bit, I'm going to say, bad guy of me, but I actually do mm. like Lucy. Okay. And here's the reason why. When she said she was the manager of champions, she didn't care what she did. She would get the job done. Absolutely, she did. But, there's one thing you really don't do in the business. There was a show that I saw, that I think I was there. She actually did something that even I thought was very, very shallow, very low, and very downright disgusting. And that is, she put her, she, I think she put her hands... On the second goal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is wrong in so many ways. I will be the first person to say if anybody, anybody, touches her while I'm around, they won't wake up. They will be in a stretcher on the way to the hospital for the next three weeks. And I would be right there with you. Definitely. I would legit... Drink myself a lot of milk, have a bunch of estrogen in my system, and feed you my breast milk. Because that's how bad, that's how mad I would get. Honestly. I would stomp the ground on that. 
So when Lucy did that, oh, I was no. I mean, the words, yeah, that was pushing it. Yeah, but don't put your hands on anybody who no. has any disability at all whatsoever. That's one. Two, don't put your hands on someone who's in a wheelchair, who's who, who's, who's handicapped from who's in a wheelchair. That is just wrong on so many levels. Absolutely, yes, it is. Very true. Plus, I, I'm I'm gonna say this in a way. Okay. Even if you're physically provoked. Yeah. You can yell at her, and say, "Don't you dare touch me," or else there will be some consequences. Legally. You can take it to court. That's assault and battery. But at the same time, don't ever do that. That is wrong in so many ways. But you were right. And all, about that. all Alyssa was doing that night was taking photos at ringside. Mm -hmm. She wasn't doing anything wrong. She was exactly. trying to correct the wrong that Lucy was doing during the match. Exactly. But when you asked me that question about... If it wasn't for Lucy, he wouldn't have had the title. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I agree to disagree. Okay. Because regardless if Lu Lucy's there or not, we've seen it time and time again. He defended that championship. Yes, he has. So many times. Regardless if Lucy is there or not, Lucy was not there for the past how long now? Lucy hasn't been here for how long now? Since well, last October actually. Who's the champion right now? Television champion? Morocco. Thank you. But hook a crook, right? Absolutely. But he's still going to get the job done. Yeah. He's still going to walk out with his head hell high. But I can guarantee you this. If he goes against me, <laughs> there ain't no turning back. No, no. As what I told Nick Pope, and I'm going to tell everybody else, I'm still standing. So here's the major question. Will the television champion, Salvatore Morocco walk out with more gold than what he walked in with? You know, that's one of the whole questions that I can come back to later and think about that. Okay. Because Tim Horner Jr. successfully defended that championship in a two out of three falls match. Of course. Two, Sal Salvatore Morocco is, I hate to say this, Almost as technical as Tim Hunter Jr. I would agree, but uh, I think wholeheartedly that I have one choice for that match. Really? One choice. One choice? Tim Horner Jr. Hmm. Right there. Well. That's my choice. I will come back to that question when you ask me later on in the show. Because okay. that's one of those like questions where I have to like really like think about that very extra carefully because if you think about it this way like I said by hook or crook he might get the job done but at the same time Tim Horner Jr. had a by hook or crook moment with Rostica yeah so it can happen again and he's, he thinks outside of the box so I'll come back to that one later so in another great matchup for that evening on June 24th in Williamson we will have the special attraction with the lunatic you never know what he's going to do next. You got a point. Against professional wrestling legend Dick the Bruiser Jr. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when I first started over here last year, the last year's Rolling Stones show, Lunatic went through a table. Yes. A flaming table by the Lucy's. Yeah. By the Lucy's. I'm going to say Lucy's goons. Yeah, Lucy's goons, Lucy's renegades, goons. whatever, but... Uh, don't say renegades, because... Yeah, I, that is infringing on your tag team. Yes, but we we were apart. I'm going to be honest. I was thinking about going to Lucy. But Lunatic has a special place in my heart, honestly. He's that type of guy... That it doesn't. He he's the same person. He he's like he he feels the same exact way as I do. He doesn't care if y'all like him. He doesn't care if y'all hate him. 
Mm-hmm. He's still gonna be him. He's still gonna be himself. He's still, which, trust me, there's a lot of sides to him. <sighs> that even I was like, what? <laughs> but hey, it's lunatic. I there's mean, a lot of curves on his road. There's a whole lot of curves and hit himself with no brakes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's no brakes with that. To take a line from Jerry. Yeah, but at the same time. Dick the Bruiser Jr. has those curves, too. Yes. And definitely no brakes. It's a family legacy, basically, oh, for yeah. Dick the Bruiser and also the lunatic. Mm-hmm. They... If you think of it this way, it's like... Even though... I'm not probably supposed to say it. I'm, I'm going to say his name anyway. It's like if the original Sheik went against Abdullah the Butcher... I, th- I know for a fact that it would have happened. Yeah. Or that happened. Yes. And huh, there's a lot of blood shit there. <laughs> yes, there was. But when, if I had it, the, the, the age-old question, you have to choose between Luna Sick or Dr. Bruce Jr. Who is more capable of getting the job done? Well... You know, with the lunatic, I spoke with him recently in an interview, and it was for the Williamson show, and he vowed to end the legacy of the Bruiser family for his uncle, the Sheik. Well, I mean, (laughs) usually when he he sticks by his word. And especially when he's got his friend known as barbed wire somewhere close by. Mm-hmm. You never know what may happen. Well, I think it was his girlfriend, Barbie Wire. Could be. Could be. Yeah. Or uh, Thumbelina Attack. Yep. That kind of hits it too. But, David Bruiser is one cherry swinging son B. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> so, in this match, I have to go with Lunatic. No disrespect to Dick the Bruiser Jr. though. Obviously, no disrespect to Dick the Bruiser Jr. He, like a lot of you guys are probably gonna look at, like probably looking at me like, why did you say lunatic? Here's why. When you are on the road, twenty four seven, for a WWE Big Ten wrestling, who was here since day one? Family. Family. A lunatic. Family is going to stick together no matter what happens. And hey, I could be wrong. If Lunatic doesn't get the job done, I will basically come to your podcast next and say I was wrong. Okay. But. I'd be glad to have you on any other oh, future podcast. Definitely, I mean. definitely. But. I'm sorry, but. I, I, I have mad love for Dick the Bruiser Jr. I have mad respect for him. He has been in this business for how long? I mean... Many years. I think he wrestled my dad a couple times. But at the same time, it's it's about experience versus family legacy. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, but blood is thicker than water. And I have to go with Lunatic. I would have to agree. I mean, after seeing the uh, viciousness from the lunatic at the last show and witnessing that firsthand, I feel scared for Dick the Bruiser Jr. and anyone else who gets in the way of the lunatic. I heard I heard about that. Like, yeah, vicious mean streak, which is something that we've seen before. Multiple times. Multiple times. I mean, hey, one minute he's the, the most loved... The next, he's the most hated. But like he, but like I said before, it, he doesn't really care. No, not at all. He doesn't really care if he will hurt you. When he steps foot in that ring, all that is on his mind is to inflict pain and not give any mercy. Exactly. And that's what he's going to do. But I'm going to tell you this. Dick the Bruiser's not going to just, go, just not going to fly down. He's going to come back to me. So, good luck, you guys. I mean, (laughs) good luck.
we will get to the very special attraction match here at the end of the segment. Mm -hmm. But our next event will be a Lucha Libre tag team event. Ooh. With the aforementioned Crazy Nick Pope. And a relative newcomer in only his second match in AWWL, Cisco Silver, mm. teaming up to take on Temerario Dos, the Lucha Libre heavyweight champion, and Johnny Dynamite Jr., another one of the relative newcomers to AWWL. Hmm. Well, I'm going to be brutally honest. I have not heard of either Cisco Silver or Johnny Dynamite Jr. Okay. So I can't really say anything about those two yet but the next podcast you'll have me most likely and we could easily figure this I could easily figure out like which one I'm going to like and which I'm not I mean it's it, it's going to happen definitely Tamario does I'm going to save Nick Pope for last okay okay Tamario does mad respect mad respect for you you are our Lucha Libre champion you have successfully defended that title in so many occasions that even I was like, what? Mm -hmm. I went against you before. I know you have a weakness. And I definitely know what I can do. That Lucha Libre Championship, if... I go against you for it might come home to me just might just might but I can guarantee you this he's not gonna, he's this oh okay we'll go back to that in future references for Tamario knows but hey the reason why I am choosing Tamario uh Tamario dos and Jenny Dynamite Jr. Is because of the last person, Crazy Nick Pope. The last show. So glad there's a camera here. <laughs> the last show. I looked at you and I said, I am still standing. You have a weakness. And I'm not talking about physical. No, I'm not talking about physical. Okay. I'm not talking about mental. He puts the mental into experimental. I would agree 100% on that. You have an emotional weakness. And that's something that even he probably doesn't know. Let me tell you something, Nick. Crazy Nick Pope. What we did at the last show was one of the best moments AEWL has ever witnessed in Fremont, Ohio. And when we go against each other again, I'm not holding back. I am going to give you my all. And when it comes down to it, there will be blood. Either mine or or yours. If it's mine, I'll lick it up and say, yes, please give me some more. Because that way, I can go to you and emotionally bring you down. And Cisco Silver, going against, uh, being teammates with Nick, and trust me, I was, a, I was, I was teammates with him before. Once or twice before, yeah. Yeah, once or twice before. Dumb referee. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Dumb referee. Let me tell you something, Cisco. If you get in my way, and Johnny Dynamite Jr. too, I don't care. If you both get in my way, no, no. That is all I gotta say. No. You'll have a very short lived AWL wrestling career. And that's, that's definitely what I got to say about that. So, yeah, I'm going to choose Tamario Dustin Jenny Dynamite Jr. How about you? I would have to agree. The Lucha Libre champion has gotten a one-up on Nick Pope before. 
numerous and, occasions. Yeah, thankfully. numerous occasions. Thankfully. Yeah, and I think he'll do it again, mm-hmm. but this time in tag team form. So. But before we get to the next one. Okay. I have one more thing to say about Nick, about Crazy Nick Pope. Regardless of whatever happens afterwards, I will be the human being and saying, you did get the job done. You pinned me in that ring one, two, three. Yep. I'll give you that credit. But as I said, and as I did, I stood up and I shocked everybody by still swinging. For sure. You shocked the world. And I will do it again. Can we go to the next match before my blood boils, please? Sure. <laughs> the next match, <sighs> the returning maniac Ricky Vidal, who we haven't seen in a couple of months, <laughs> will be back against David Tower, the Puerto Rican sensation. What are your thoughts on these men? Um... Um, the maniac Ricky Vidal. Um, he needs his, he needs his vital check. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Unintended, I'm sure. Unintended, definitely. He he. You know he talks to himself outside of the ring. I've noticed that yeah, a little bit. He and not only inside of the ring. I'm like he is weird. Sitting at ringside, I've I've noticed quite a few things. He. I think he, I think once, I think he talked to the termical like it was a person. I mean, like, I think George Animal Steel is, like, the only person that actually makes love to the damn thing. <laughs> but, <laughs> of course. Know. But, David Tower is one of the most honest people I think I've ever met. So, in the singles match, honestly, I'm gonna have to go... Well, I'm going to have to go with David Tower. He has that experience. He does. And the past two times, I do believe, he went against Salvatore Morocco. Mm-hmm. At the last two shows in he Fremont. He came very close to defeating Mr. Salvatore Morocco. In the first match, it was for the title. In the second match, he did defeat him just recently oh. in this most recent contest. He oh, did nice. defeat him. Nice. However, the title was not on the line. Uh, don't you hate that? I do. I was like, oh, really? Come on. You know what that means? That means he is number one contender. Hands down number one contender for t- the television championship. So Salvatore Morocco has a big, huge target on him. Even if he becomes world, uh, even if he becomes world heavyweight champion, there's going to be more targets on him than, than the big butt pole. Is that what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. World television champion, world heavyweight champion. Doesn't matter to David Tower. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, or Tim Horner Jr. <laughs> yeah, Tim Horner, for that matter. Like, I mean, or every single one of us. The entire locker room would be gunning for him. Oh yeah, regardless. Hands down. I, I I like to gun for any championship. I don't really care. Yeah, but I mean, even if it is Tim Horner Jr., I, if he had, if if I had to go against Tim Horner Jr., I think that would be another great match I would have. That's really I agree. Extreme matches, you know? Yeah. Be kind of nice, but as far as the whole singles match between David Tower and the Maniac, I jeez. Every single time I listen about Maniac, mm-hmm. that song, she's a maniac. maniac. Yes, that, that's what I think every single time when I see him walking down the ramp, because he's that weird. Yeah, but I have to say this: he's very, he might be very different, mm-hmm. but it might be a good thing. If you really think about it, it might be a good thing. Yeah. All right. Because it could be something that, in all honesty, David Tower hadn't seen before. Yeah. I've won against David Tower before. It was a tag team match. And I almost tore my meniscus. Oh. <laughs> I know. Oh, I know. I was out of action for a little bit. But. And it was just a br- It was. It was only a bruise. You know, you know that? Don't wow. you hate it when it was like a heavy bruise almost tore ligament? It's like, it's I like, almost got you, but 
It's just a bruise. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. I mean, surgery would be nice, but eh, no. <laughs> nah. I'll hey, a lot less recovery time, so that's, yeah, that's that a, helps. That's a good thing. But he did something that was very controversial when he dropped the F-bomb, and I'm not talking about F-U-C-K. Yep. He said F-A-G. Yeah, absolutely. And Derogatory and toward the LGBT, LGBT community. community. And he did it in front of kids. I here here's my thought on that. You can do it in front of me all you want. You can call me everything except for a white boy. Well, you can call me late for dinner because trust me, I'm usually late for dinner. But of course, like we're all late for dinner <laughs> at times. That's when we just snack up and leave. But when he did that in front of the kids. In front of a family-friendly show, it was just so wrong. Yes, it was. But I forgave him. And here's why. We slipped up. Yeah. You know how many times I slipped up? I'm sure quite a few. Oh, yeah. I, I slapped a girl across the face before. In a wow. Match. Okay, that's bad. Ugh. I had a cat fight with a girl. With the same girl. I've had countless countless things happened to me. I did countless things to other people. And you know what? Words are words. There's salt on a wound. Mm-hmm. But I have mad respect for David Tower because he doesn't... I He cares. You can tell he cares. Yeah. He cares about this business like the back of his hand. We are all married to the business in some way. One shape, one way, shape, or form, yeah. Exactly. And David Tower has that husband mentality for the business. He is a hard-working husband when it comes to this, when it comes to this wrestling business. Yeah. Definitely. So I'm going to say David Tower. I would agree. David Tower with more experience mm -hmm. and uh, more tactics that could help him in the long run. To win the contest. Plus, that boy can fly. <laughs> yes, he can. <laughs> Tell you something, that big guy can fly. <laughs> he might be big, but he can definitely fly. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. So, before we get to the special attraction, let's right. get to another match that I'm really looking forward to. Hmm. One that I know we talked about in the first segment. Yeah. It's Soulman Nelson returning for the first time in a little while, mm -hmm. taking on. You. Yay. Rainbow McPeters. Yay. Okay. So, here's... Here is my honest... Honesty is always the best policy. Mm. Yes, indeed it is. So many of them has versed so many people in AWWL. Yeah. I heard he's a former tag team champion. He is. I heard that he was a for he was a former Lucha Libre champ champion at the time. Yeah. And he teamed up with so many people. He went against so many people that actually has names. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't want to speak. Yeah. They always Consider me the young gun, and here's why. I shoot a throw. Mm -hmm. I don't jump the gun. I am the boom boom pal. Pun unintended. Yeah, of course. Hashtag black eyed peas. So, <laughs> when you shout have... Out. Yeah, shout out to you. When you put myself against someone you know what you're going to expect which is the unexpected mm -hmm. I don't think with this I feel this business so man Nelson has this business Right here. Yep. Right here. 
in his gut. He has that drive. But at the same time, I do as well. You are going, Bobby Coleman, you are going to see two cruiserweight masterminds at its finest. So a lot of high flying. Kind of, sort of. Potentially. Potentially. You're going to see some high flying from me, trust and believe. Fans, you got to stay tuned for that. But this man is known for flying. Yes, he is. He is called Soul Man because he is so fly. But once you fly, call me the fly swatter. There was one guy I went against that was in the cruiserweight division. Okay. Jumped off a top rope and I chopped him. Extra hard. Oh. I can chop anybody anywhere at any time. Doesn't matter what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They can do a 450 splash. They can do a 630 and I'll still chop them. These kick, these legs right here are one of my most notorious things in the business. It's, that's my honest opinion. I used to kick the punching bags mm -hmm. over at Michigan Sports Camps to the point to where there's dents in there that I can show you. Wow. I, I did a jumping spinning heel kick. Okay. A spinning heel kick off the top rope. And the other little dummy called TNT. Mm -hmm. Little dynamite there, too. <laughs> yep. Oh. <laughs> he, he flipped four times over. And he's like a big... Like he stands about that stuff. Yeah. He flipped over four times. Hmm. It was very, very great. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. So... The, here's my honest opinion about the whole who's going to win, who's going to lose, yada, yada, yada. So Man Nelson is not going against any ordinary person. He's not going to go against Lunatic. Nope. He'll get chomped up a bit, to tell you what. Yeah, definitely. He's not going against the World Heavyweight Champion, Tim Hunter Jr. He is not going against, unfortunately, if I say this again, Crazy Gunnett Pope. He's not <laughs> going to go against Ricky Vidal. He's not going to go against Cisco Silver. He ain't going to go against freaking Nina Dupree. He's going against me, a McFeeders. And the one thing that us McFeeders know, and that's how to inflict pain, suffering. And let me tell you something. My, ra my name might be Rainbow, <laughs> but I'll treat you like Skittles. Because you'll be tasting a rainbow. But, I'll give you one thing. If you go to the well once too often, you might end up hurt. We've taught that valuable lesson before. Mm -hmm. We're both evenly experienced. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to say equally. Yeah. Because it's not because, quite equal. But. Yeah. We're all created equal. I mean, hi. But when you go against someone who exudes equality, you don't look at equal people. No. You look at like we're even. We're even. And speaking of me, even I'll get with I'll get even with Nick Pope later. But of course, yeah, of course. <laughs> but. As far as me, I'm not focused on crazy Nick Pope. Here is my big time one year anniversary revolution resolution. Yeah. It doesn't matter who I'm going against. I'm going to give it my all. If I lose, oh well. It happens. Pick yourselves up. 
and we go and enjoy the crowd Mm -hmm. again and again and again. Just keep walking into the next venue after that. And I don't get mad. At all. I get even. Yep. And this year, you will see a whole different side of Rainbow McPheaters. Yeah. And as I've told the fans before, now let's get to this other matchup. Mm -hmm. You know, I told the fans before, there's going to be a very special matchup on the 24th in Williamson. Yes, there is. It's going to be exclusive to this point to the AWWL. And it's one of Big Time Wrestling's finest matches brought back from history. It's a steel cage match, but with the added stipulation that fans bring the weapons that will be allowed inside the steel cage. Mm. And there will be two drawings that night for names to be entered into that contest. Nice. So the competitors are yet to be known. Hmm. So you may end up getting your chance to get even with Mr. Pope. Yeah. <laughs> and that would be the highlight of the night. Yes, indeed it would. But if we're looking at everybody on the card, the one person that I would actually kind of, sort of, not be afraid. I'm never afraid of who I was. Mm -hmm. I might think twice a little bit here and there, but I'm not afraid. The only person that I'd probably like think twice about Lunatic. Honestly. Yeah. Lunatic or Dick the Bruiser Jr. Because everybody on here has a steel cage experience. Mm -hmm. Except for myself. Okay. Everybody on here obviously had a fans ring the weapons match before. Except for myself. Absolutely. Except for myself. I am the least expected person to be in a steel cage fans ring the weapons match. But, as you once said, and as, of course, I said it before, expect the unexpected. You never know what surprises may lie at an AWWL event. So... Mm -hmm. With that being said, I think it's time to wrap up the show. Awesome. So thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate you being the first guest on the oh, show. Definitely. Thank you and guys so much. And wrestling fans, Big Time Wrestling returns with Big Time AWWL Friday, June 24th at 8.15 p.m. Bell time is 8.15. The fans will get the meet and greet specialty at 6.45 p.m. at the Williamston Red Cedar Jubilee. Tickets are $10 for VIP exclusive ringside seating, $8 for general admission. Anything else you'd like to say, Mr. McPheeters, before we leave the air? Yes, Um. we forgot one more question. You asked me earlier who I would pick between Tim, Tim Hortor Jr. and Salvatore Morocco. Yes. I am going to go off the wall and say Salvatore Morocco. Wow. Because, like you said, by hook or crook, you may never know what's going to happen. So, I love you, Tim Horner Jr., and trust me, it was a hard decision. But my mind and my mouth and my heart, like my heart is saying you, hands down you, because you need to be champion for a while. Well, until, I'm, until I get there. But when... <laughs> when <laughs> Toot your own horn for a minute. Whoop, whoop. So, when you go <laughs> against Salvatore Morocco, expect, like I said, expect the unexpected. Because he might have a trick or, a trick or two up his sleeve. And I heard that uh, over at the Williamson show, the next, uh, not the Williamson show, the next show after that, Mayor Danny Sanchez is going to be in a match? Yes. Wow. July the 8th. <sighs> Friday night, July the 8th. Wow, wow, Mayor wow, Danny wow. Sanchez, due to his actions from the pre from this last event yeah, in Fremont, yeah, Ohio, he stepped in it. Uh, stepped in it big because he's got a team with the current reigning world champion Tim Horner Jr. Okay. against the Lunatic and Salvador oh, Morocco. No, 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 no. Danny Sanchez. Yes. And Tim Horner Jr. Be careful. Danny Sanchez, you stepped in it a little bit, and I'm not going to lie. 
now you kind of have to pay the price. And Luna takes a pretty big price. But, Salvatore Morocco is also a pretty big price, too. The one thing we don't do in the wrestling business is, like, we usually never have, like, a mayor. I think this is, like, the first time a mayor is actually going to be in in the ring, except for Jesse Ventura. Uh, of course. But of course. <laughs> but at the same time, like, we... <sighs> Good luck. You're gonna need it. <laughs> I'm sure he will be uh, classically trained by Tim by the time the show comes on July oh, 8th. Oh, I hope so. I hope so, because that's gonna be a match I'm willing to see. I cannot okay. wait, and I'm sure the fans will be coming in droves to see that contest. But, as you said, we're gonna be focusing on one thing. Which is the Williamson Show, Friday, June 24th. And I will see you guys there. That's right, Friday night, June 24th, 8.15 bell time. The Red Cedar Jubilee in Williamston, Michigan. Once again, tickets are $10 for VIP ringside and $8 for general admission. Be a VIP, trust me. VIP seats are much better. Much and get better. your tickets now, they are going quickly. Tickets are available at Thomas Auto Body in Williamston. Ooh, nice. I gotta get a car. <laughs> so, get your tickets, and get your tickets fast. For Mr. Rainbow McFeeders, I am Bobby Coleman, and this has been the very first edition of the Russell Force Radio video podcast, brought to you by Big Time AWWL Wrestling. And until next time, wrestling fans, we hope to see you at ringside.